At time of recording, this ship has the largest cargo hauling capacity of any of the flyable ships in Star Citizen. That makes it the natural choice for players interested in the upper echelons of cargo or trading gameplay styles. Or does it? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Crusader Industries C2 Hercules Starlifter, which is described as a transport ship. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it, so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. Starting the tour for the Hercules will approach from the left or port side and the front of the ship. The Hercules is split across two decks. There's the lower deck which is where the cargo or vehicles are stored and then the upper deck. There are three entry points into the ship. There are buttons at the front and back, each of which deploy a front or rear cargo ramp. This leads up to the lower deck, the cargo deck. Alternatively, in the centre of the ship, on the left or port side, there is an elevator which can take you to either the lower deck or all the way up to the top deck. For most players entering the ship to go straight to the bridge, they would use this elevator. In this instance, we'll start by heading straight up to the top deck. This is the habitation or crew space of the C2, largely free of cargo. I say largely free because there are these bins that house access to the ship's inventory, as well as in some cases, components. All in all, this space feels a really nice blend of habitable, but also functional. Moving towards the front of the ship, we enter into what's called the bridge corridor. There's a series of airlockable doors, as well as component access on either side. These are shielded in small areas behind the walls. Moving further forward into the second airlock section, there is a weapons rack on either side, as well as armour storage and escape pods. And then right at the front is the bridge. There are two chairs, one for the pilot and one for the co-pilot. There are some more component storage. as well as a small rack in between the pilot and co-pilot seat, potentially for a small firearm. Each of the doors in this section has individual controls, meaning you could potentially lock certain doors should you choose to. As we head back to the main upper deck, we'll head to the right or starboard side of the ship. It's worth pointing out there are two of these small walkways that go above the central gubbins that let you cross from side to side, as well as a space at the front for crossing. On this right or starboard side is habitation. This is where the two beds and the ablutions are for the crew. There's even more storage available, as well as those beds. The ablutions are handily hidden away behind a button. I'm afraid it's your usual shower toilet combo. As 
as we head back to the main deck through one of the two doors for habitation, we move to the rear of the ship. Here you'll find even more component access, as well as the cool blue glow of this gizmo. Crossing over one of the walkways, we move to the left or port side of the ship. The rear section is largely mirrored from side to side. However, the two ante rooms on this side are marked Recreation. There's a small Crusader style seating area, some nice shelving, as well as the food preparation area. There's also a comfortable looking couch and screen in front. As with the other side, there are two doors to gain access to this room. As we see the elevator that brought us up to this deck, you could use this to get to the lower deck. Alternatively, next to it, there's a ladder which takes you down. There is a door which opens automatically as you go up or down the ladder, which effectively airlock seals the lower deck. And this lower deck is all about cargo storage. In this instance, I've filled the Hercules with boxes so you can see just how much it can store. There's an internal button at the front which deploys the front ramp. And as we move to the rear of the ship, there's also an internal button here which can deploy the rear ramp. Your Garden Variety C2 comes armed with two size 4 M6A laser cannons on gimbal size 5 hardpoints, both of which are controlled by the pilot. Additionally, there are two remote turrets controlled one at a time by the co-pilot, and both also armed with two M6A laser cannons. One turret sits beneath the chin, and one sits at the rear of the ship. Those weapons are all suitably powerful, dishing out a fair amount of damage, and with capacitors that can continue firing for a little time before needing to recharge. The challenging part, in both turrets and for the pilot, will be keeping the weapons on target, given the sluggish turn rate of the Hercules. Against NPC targets, it's just about workable, but expect players in smaller fighters to quite literally run rings around this ship. There's no missile armament aboard, which keeps things simple. The saving grace combat-wise for the C2 is the strong defensive showing, with dual size 3 shield generators providing considerable protection. To put that into context, that's the same as what you'd find on a hammerhead. That means that the C2 is able to soak up a lot of damage before something goes too wrong, which may be enough to buy some time to summon some nearby backup if needed. The C2 identifies as a big, cargo-oriented ship, and so visibility is what you might expect, somewhat limited. That's not to say bad, actually, out to the front and sides it's fairly reasonable, but it's reminiscent of what you might find in the cockpit of a modern-day jet airliner. Handling also follows a similar vein. For its size, the Hercules actually handles fairly well, but given that size, it still feels heavy as you fly it around. The SCM limiter defaults to 135 meters per second, which gives a flavor for the sort of speeds you might be maneuvering at. But the Hercules does have toggleable VTOL engines, which deploy through a wingtip folding mechanism. It's pretty cool, but feels more aesthetic than incredibly useful, at least in the current flight model. With a top speed of 963 meters per second, the Hercules isn't the fastest in a straight line, but is no slouch either. The highlight is the atmospheric performance, where the Hercules is notably easier to fly than some of the other big cargo options. That is, until you come to land. Landing the C2 beautifully takes a little practice, 
because the landing gear is so far back from the nose of the ship, meaning it's very easy to wobble or even scrape the nose on a landing attempt. With experience, it's something that can be overcome, but for a ship that makes a feature of the ability to land planet side to load and unload goods and vehicles, it might surprise some pilots. The stock quantum drive is the Kama, and is well worth an upgrade as it's very slow, and the quantum fuel stores on the C2 are more than capable of feeding a much faster quantum drive. The Hercules is a fairly large ship, and so costs to refuel, rearm and repair do add up, usually into the thousands or potentially tens of thousands of Alpha UEC. But that'll be small change compared to the costs and potential profits to be had from filling the ship with cargo. And that cargo hauling is likely to be the main money making loop for a Hercules pilot. The 696 SCU of cargo storage is currently unmatched in game, meaning that cargo profits are higher than any other ship. It's quite possible to use that cargo bay for putting delivery boxes in too, of course but realistically, a smaller ship would be better suited for that. Interestingly, it is possible to also run some quite high-end combat contracts against NPCs with the C2. The powerful weapons, coupled with the big shields, make it a potential option, albeit there are also better choices of ship for those missions too. By way of loadout changes, upgrading the quantum drive to a mil spec drive like a TS2 is a real must for anyone looking to do anything with their C2, otherwise it'll largely be down to swapping weapons and potentially other items to personal preference. The C2 is the pure cargo variant of the Hercules series. All of the space in the cargo bay is reserved for storing goods or vehicles, and that's how it should be. The ramp at the front and rear make for easy loading of ground vehicles, as well as straight through options for smaller spacecraft, like Merlin for example. And the lower deck space is large enough to accommodate even some of the larger ground vehicles, like the Nova Tank or the Ballista. Upstairs there are all the creature comforts you could wish for, as well as a considerable inventory for hauling things like ship components from A to B. The two person crew hits a sweet spot, where the C2 is easy to fly as a solo pilot, but equally has got room for a friend to come along and get involved, should they wish to. And you might also be quite taken by the clean looks of the C2, both inside and out. But it's worth adding that the high cargo capacity of the Hercules also means it's very expensive to fill up the ship with cargo, and there's a high risk of loss if something goes wrong. That's likely to be a situation exacerbated by the 318 patch, which introduces more explodey cargo and may well encourage players to attack cargo ships more often. Which all circles back to price. At $400 out of game, the C2 isn't cheap and ought only be entertained by players who are really taken in by it. However, the in-game price at 5 million Alpha UEC feels more accessible, and actually quite competitive. That's a broadly similar price to the Caterpillar for a ship that's easier to fly, carries more cargo, and has more ground vehicle options. So if the Hercules takes your fancy as a large cargo hauler, and you're comfortable with the risk of other players trying to explode your cargo-y goods, I'd certainly recommend picking one up in-game. But what do you think of the C2 Hercules? Would you pick one up in-game? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the video comments. As always, if you're not yet subscribed, you might consider it if you got this far, to give YouTube the nudge to suggest similar videos to you in the future. And it would also be really helpful to me if you would press that like or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most so I can focus on making the most relevant videos in the future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.